Hi, my name is Gail Thiel, and I've been involved in ministry here at Hope for 15 years as the preschool director and lead teacher. I'm Kim Thompson. And I'm Dave Thompson. And we've been at Hope Lutheran for about 28 years. We've been involved in many ministries over the year. Currently, I'm an assistant teacher at Hope Lutheran at Angels of Hope and also involved with foundations, community engagement, and love doing Vacation Bible School with Hannah. And we remember the name that was placed upon us in the water of baptism. We worship tonight in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking His grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in His mercy, has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins as a called and ordained servant of christ and by his authority i therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen we respond tonight in the words of the most famous of the psalms we speak together psalm 23 the lord is my shepherd I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you invite us to trust in you for our salvation. Deal with us not in the severity of your judgment, but by the greatness of your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our Old Testament lesson for this week is from Isaiah chapter 25. The Lord of hosts will prepare a lavish banquet for all peoples on this mountain, a banquet of aged wine, choice pieces with marrow, and refined aged wine. 
And on this mountain, he will swallow up the covering which is over all peoples, even the veil which is stretched over all nations. He will swallow up death for all time. And the Lord God will wipe tears away from all faces. And he will remove the reproach of his people from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. And it will be said in that day, Behold, this is our God, for whom we have waited, that he might save us. This is the Lord, for whom we have waited. Let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle lesson is from Philippians chapter 4. Paul writes, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I will say, rejoice. Let your gentle spirit be known to all men. The Lord is near. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute, if there is any excellence and if anything worthy of praise, dwell on these things. The things you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at last you have revived your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned before, but you lacked opportunity. Not that I speak from want, for I have learned to be content in whatever circumstances I am. I know how to get along with humble means, and I also know how to live in prosperity. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of being filled and going hungry, both of having abundance and suffering need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'd invite you to stand, please, for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew the 22nd chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus spoke to them again in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. And he sent out his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding feast, and they were unwilling to come. Again, he sent out other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Behold, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fattened livestock are all butchered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding feast. But they paid no attention and went their way, one to his own farm, another to his business. And the rest seized his slaves and mistreated them and killed them. But the king was enraged. And he sent his armies and destroyed those murderers and set their city on fire. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy. Go therefore to the main highways, and as many as you find there, invite to the wedding feast. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered together all they found, both evil and good. And the wedding hall was filled with dinner guests. But when the king came in to look over the dinner guests, he saw a man there who was not dressed in wedding clothes. And he said to him, Friend, how did you come in here without wedding clothes? The man was speechless. Then the king said to the servants, Bind him hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I'd invite you to join me as we confess our faith together using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, 
maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I would invite you to be seated at this time. We will sing our sermon hymn uh, following uh, the message this evening. Grace, mercy, and peace be yours from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Hello again, Hope family. I pray that God will bless us as we consider and grow in his word today. Here at Hope, we are now in the middle of a three-week journey in which we're taking a look at some of our core family values. Have you ever thought about the core values that shape your life individually or maybe shape the life of your family? If you had to sit down and think about them and, and write them out, what might show up on your list? Well, I had the opportunity about a year ago uh, to have that very experience where I was put through a process where I had to sit down and intentionally think about the things that mattered to me, the way that God has wired me up in particular, and some core values kind of came to the surface for me uh, that I value, for example, discipling others, that I value fostering harmony, uh, living generously, pursuing truth. These were some of the things uh, that came up for me. It'd be interesting to hear what would come up for you. I, I would expect that it wouldn't be exactly the same. And that's because God has brought great variety into his family so that people have all sorts of different things that matter to them, that are incredibly valuable to them. And, and it's a beautiful thing to see that variety, even as God brings us into one family and makes us one in Jesus. This month, I'm, considering, I'm inviting us to consider our hope family values. When the family comes together, what things do we collectively hold dear? When others interact with the Hope family, what would we want them to see? What would we want them to experience? Last week we heard St. Paul in Philippians chapter 3 as we considered the foundational core value of being anchored to Jesus. My prayer, and I hope it's your prayer too, is that everything we are and that everything we would do as the Hope family would find its heartbeat, its center in Jesus. That we would see ourselves as being alive because of Jesus and for Jesus, for his sake. If we're going to live up to our name and bear witness to our community that we have real hope, that hope must be anchored in the crucified and risen King of Kings. Our hope is never centered on what we can accomplish or on how impressive we can become. 
As the hymn says, our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. So, I pray that our life together, our interactions with one another, and our witness to those around us in this community is dominated by Jesus, our connection to him, and the life and the hope that we have in him. And in reality, our being anchored to Jesus allows us to live out what I would like to call hope family core value number two tonight, which is living with joy. If there was ever a time, ever a year, where people could use a joy injection, I think 2020 is a pretty good candidate. You turn on the news, and it feels like we are witnessing a train derailment in real time. People are sick. Businesses are suffering economically. Hospitals seem to be filling up. Kids and teachers are stuck at home. And it's increasingly difficult to live the life that we would desire to live. On top of all that, it's an election year. Ugh. You've probably not been able to avail yourself of those things that often make life enjoyable, like a meal out, or just going to get a cup of coffee somewhere, or sitting in the stands at Lambeau Field and cheering on our surprisingly successful football team. Paul then comes along in Philippians 4 verse 4 and exhorts us to rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. And we say to him, Paul, how? In 2020, how can I rejoice always? When I'm sick, how do I rejoice? When I'm stuck at home trying to facilitate school for three or four kids, how do I live with joy? When I'm home alone, because perhaps I'm in that vulnerable category in which the virus would be bad news for me. Where can joy be found? Well, this past week I had the privilege of leading chapel uh, virtually uh, for our students at our association schools, Green Bay Trinity and NAW Lutheran High School. And as I led chapel with them, I asked them the question, uh, how do you see this jar? Uh, is this jar half empty? Is it half full? Do you tend to be a pessimist? Do you tend to be an optimist? Or do you just wheeze a lot of the questions and say, no, I'm, I'm a realist. I see it exactly how it is, okay? What do you tend to uh, see when you look at life, when you look at the circumstances around you? And the question is, where do you derive joy from? Do you derive joy primarily from your circumstances? how things are going in life around you. You know, this past week has been pretty nice outside. It's been a little bit warmer. It's been sunny. That does wonders for my mood. It does wonders for my energy. Maybe you feel exactly the same. When we have a nice, warm, sunny day, that can fill us up a little bit. But you know what? Next week might not be like that. And we all know this is Wisconsin. Winter's coming, right? That can drain us. Then we think about other areas in our life. Sometimes, you know, we feel like we have our act together. Uh, whether it's at home, you know, I'm organized. Uh, the house is relatively clean. I'm on top of the laundry. Maybe it's in your job. You know, I'm getting things done. I'm well-respected. I'm, I'm, I'm making it happen. And that can be pretty good. That can fill our tank. But then there are other times in life where our tank is drained because we feel like we're not getting it done. The obligations are just stacking up around us. And... Uh, we're not able to hack it. How about our kids? Our kids, for five, six months, were unable to see their friends at school, unable to interact with their teachers face-to-face. -face. Then August and September comes along, and they actually get to be inside a school building. Kind of fills the tank a little bit. Fills the tank for the parents, too, by the way. And then, the last two, three weeks happen. <laughs> Here we are back in virtual school and parents are trying to figure out what to do uh, with those kiddos. Maybe on a, a regular day you look forward to, you know, a new toy 
or uh, a new device. Maybe it's a new car, uh, a new home, and the time comes you're actually able to procure that thing, to purchase it. And it's pretty cool. It's pretty neat to be able to enjoy that new blessing, but in the course of time, that new thing becomes an old thing, breaks down, wears out, needs repair, and suddenly our circumstance finds us draining once again. Companionship. You know the love of a friend. You know the love of a spouse, perhaps the love of many years, and that love can certainly fill our tank and and make us feel like life is what it's supposed to be. But then illness comes along, and we're forced to say goodbye to a beloved spouse or a dear friend, lay them to rest in the grave. We can feel pretty empty. We want our lives to be full, obviously. I think everybody on earth wants their life to be full. And yet, if we chase after that fullness, if we chase after that joy in all the normal ways and seek to derive it primarily from our circumstances, we'll never get there. Because something will always come along in life in this world that is broken, under the curse, subject to death, that will leave us empty. This would be a sad place to end our message. (laughs) But don't despair. Let's check in again with St. Paul as he composes Philippians chapter 4 this evening. In Philippians 4, St. Paul tells us to rejoice in the Lord always. Here's a question for you. Where is Paul as he's writing his letter to the Philippians? He is imprisoned. He's in jail. Paul calls himself an ambassador in chains in his prison letters that he sends out in Philippians and uh, Colossians, for example. Calls himself an ambassador in chains. Uh, He was a very successful uh, missionary, went to cities, taught lots of people about Jesus for the first time. Along the way, made an army of friends and companions and fellow workers in the gospel. And now he's imprisoned. He's separated from them. He is unable to have freedom of movement. He would have every reason to believe that his life was pretty empty. And yet, as you read Paul's epistle to the Philippians, what you read is the exact opposite. That despite his circumstance, his life is not simply half full, it is brimming to absolutely full. In every page, he's rejoicing, he's giving thanks, he's pouring out thanksgiving for what God has done in his life and the opportunities that he has. The question is, how is this even possible? It's possible because of those few words that he attaches to the command to rejoice in Philippians chapter 4. He says, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Fullness is possible for Paul because Paul remembers that he is in Christ. Rejoicing always is possible when it is rejoicing in the Lord. To the naked eye, that sounds like wishful thinking. That sounds like delusion. But by faith, we come to see our lives are are really never half empty. And they're really never half full, but they are always really full to the point of overflowing. This is what King David, for example, is talking about in Psalm 23, when he says that my cup overflows. Remember that? It overflows because he remembers that the Lord is his shepherd. He remembers what he has in belonging to to God and belonging ultimately to Jesus. It's what Jesus is talking about in John chapter 4. He's with this woman at the well in Samaria near Sychar, and he says, I can give you water that will well up in you as a spring leading to eternal life. He's talking about the presence of the Holy Spirit in her life so that she would know how loved she is by God 
and the Savior that she has in Jesus, the man standing in front of her, talking to her. In Jesus, our lives overflow, and we come to see that by faith. In the water of your baptism, your sins were washed away. You were made a child of God, an heir of death-destroying life. You open your Bible, and from all of its pages, you hear the voice of the God who made you, who loves you, who's promising to work all things for the good of those who love him. You interact with a fellow believer in Jesus, and that believer encourages you to look to Jesus as the author, the perfecter of your faith, as the one who holds all things together for you. And in that interaction, you're reminded that your life overflows to the glory of God. You struggle with weakness, but you're given the promise that even in your weakness, God's grace is sufficient for you. In fact, we're told that his power is made perfect in weakness, and our life overflows. You gather tonight to receive bread and wine, but you don't receive bread and wine alone. Your truly present Savior is here to assure you of his love, of his victory, of his forgiveness that is yours, and your life overflows. Perhaps you hear this message at a time when you're feeling isolated and alone. And yet, in hearing this message, you're reminded of Jesus' promise to you, I am with you always to the very end of the age. You might even have to lay a loved one to rest in the grave, in death. And yet even there, in death, whether we or a loved one faces it, we do so with a life that overflows. For we have a Savior who said to us, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. You get the picture? In Jesus, the cup runs over. In Jesus, we overflow. And that's how we rejoice always. Again, we say rejoice. Think about Paul's life in Philippians chapter 4 as he thinks about the nearness of Christ. His imminent return, Paul's life overflows with joy. As he refuses to fixate on the circumstances around him and instead uh, brings those to the Heavenly Father in prayer. He says, the peace that surpasses all understanding will guard and keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. His joy overflows. As he thinks about what is good and true and right and excellent and worthy of praise, Paul's life overflows overflows. As he even thinks about that gift that the Philippians have given him. By the way, Philippians is kind of like a thank you note. The Philippian Christians have blessed Paul by providing him a gift while he's in prison so that he actually has food to eat and clothing to wear, which is a really good thing. Paul overflows in thanksgiving, not simply because he's received a gift, but in that gift he's given a picture of the faithfulness of Jesus in his life in that moment and always, because there are other moments where he doesn't have as much abundance materially as he has in that moment, and yet he said, I've learned the secret of being content. I can do all things through him who gives me strength. And Paul's life overflows. And our life can overflow with joy as well, because the promises that God made to Paul are the promises that God makes to you. The faithfulness that God demonstrated to Paul is the faithfulness that God wants to demonstrate for you. The promise that not even death can separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus that God gave to Paul is the promise he gives to you so that you and I can say with St. Paul in all things, you know what, to live is Christ, to die is gain. All of life can be lived at the point of overflowing, overflowing with joy. Why? Because of that first core value, because we are anchored in Jesus, because he is ours and we are his. We have a source of life that is different than the rest of the world around us. And by the way, it's a source of life that God desires for the rest of the world around us as well. 
And as we overflow in joy, we become a source of blessing to others. As we overflow, we become a source of generous love and care to others. And through us, people get to see who God is and how good he is and how faithful he is to meet our need and to meet their need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus, as Paul says a little bit later in Philippians chapter 4. So may God bless us to come to know, to remember, to celebrate the fullness that is ours in Christ so that we may live with true joy individually, that our life together as a family would also be marked by joy. In the name of Jesus, amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard and keep our hearts and minds today and always in Christ Jesus, our King, our source of unending joy. Amen. At this time, we join together in the hymn, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. Again, welcome. I uh, thank God for our time together in worship. I pray God's richest blessings upon you and upon your family, especially uh, uh, God's blessings as well to uh, those who worship in our online format as well. Uh, as we uh, share our life together, uh, just a reminder tonight, we will once again take our offering at the door. Uh, giving can also happen uh, through our website, hopetopeer.org. We thank you for your partnership with us in ministry. In connection also with that, uh, many of you perhaps have already received a letter in the mail if you are an established uh, member of Hope Lutheran Church, uh, just asking you to prayerfully consider uh, partnering with us in 2021. We know that this year has not been an easy year for many people, and yet we ask you to uh, consider how God has worked in your life. And as he has been faithful to meet your need, uh, that you would faithfully consider uh, being a source of blessing within our ministry as well as uh, within all of your daily callings. So uh, as you receive that note, uh, receive it with a, a spirit of, of prayer, uh, thanksgiving for what God has done, and with the reminder that God continues to be faithful to us, and he will provide for us and sustain us as, as we live under his care and by faith in him. 
A couple other things we want to draw to your attention are ways to be a blessing to our community as well. You see in the back corner of the narthex, our giving tree is up and available. Uh, We want to be able to be a blessing to our community in providing uh, gifts, Christmas gifts for those in need this year. Uh, We'd invite you to uh, consider uh, being one of the people who would provide a gift through our giving tree. In addition, if you want to be a blessing, uh, you could go to Culver's on Tuesday, uh, October 13th from 5 to 8 p.m. Go through uh, the drive through line, for example, over at the Culver's in West Appear, right over uh, by Walmart. And uh, a, proceeds, uh, a percentage of your uh, purchase that evening will also go to bless uh, the efforts that lead to the giving tree. So that will also be used to purchase Uh, gifts for families in need. So there you go. You don't have to cook on Tuesday night. Just go through the drive-thru at Culver's. Uh, You will be set between the hours of five and eight. In addition, uh, we are collecting currently uh, prepackaged snack foods uh, to share with people in need in our community. You see, if you're in our narthex, a couple little uh, frog-looking things. Uh, We would invite you to uh, join us in uh, providing prepackaged snacks Uh, That will be distributed uh, to those who use the NEW Community Shelter as well as uh, students in need in our area schools. Uh, So if you participate in that, you'd also uh, be uh, a great blessing uh, to those in need in our uh, greater Green Bay community as well. Those are the key things I wanted to share with you uh, this evening. There are other things going on here at Hope. We'd invite you uh, to take your announcement sheet home with you tonight or always be able to access it at our website, hopetopeer.org as well. We pray, Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for the gift of your love that fills our lives to the brim and even overflowing with hope and joy. We thank you for the promises we have in Jesus of forgiveness and life forever because of his death and his resurrection for us. We pray by the power of your spirit that you'd cause us to rejoice in your goodness and love each and every day, regardless of our circumstances, and so point to the hope that is ours in him. We give you thanks, Father, for the many things that you have done to fill our lives uh, with joy, including the daily blessings of life as well. We lift up those who experience your good gifts in the form of a birthday. We pray for Daryl Hillman, Jolene Bratz, Roberta Hengel, Rick Hagley, uh, Deborah Piper, Phil James, Bill Meehy, Bill Ackerman, Paul Ettinger, Colt Jacobson, Mary Mellum and Marion Clevin. Lord, we ask your blessing upon these, uh, your servants, as they rejoice in your goodness and love. We also praise you with those who celebrate wedding anniversaries. We pray for Steve and Beth Siebert, for John and Nikki Fawcett, for Megan and Scott Beerhalls, Gary and Brenda Burkhard, Christopher and Jessica McCormick, Amanda and James Borchers, and Rick and Joan Stenclift. We ask your blessing upon these couples as they rejoice in your goodness and love that you've shown to them in their life together as family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray your continued blessing, Heavenly Father, upon those who are in need of healing and strength. Uh, We especially lift up our community during these difficult days uh, where many are being uh, stricken by Uh, the uh, virus that is going around uh, by the coronavirus. We ask your blessing upon all those who are ill, that you'd grant them healing, uh, that you'd be especially with all those who work in our hospitals, grant them grace and uh, endurance and safety as they carry out their calling for the good of many. Uh, We pray for those who have not been infected, Lord, that you'd keep us safe and, and healthy and Allow us to uh, live in such a way that we continue to be a a blessing to one another in the way that we care for one another. Uh, Father, we pray for our state, our our nation, even our world as as this uh, virus continues to uh, wreak havoc, that you would uh, cause your will to be done, that you would ultimately bring an end to it. But Father, in the meanwhile, that you would 
uh, bless and sustain us uh, during these days. We pray also for those who are ill or in need of healing for other reasons as well. We lift up our sister Jean. We pray for Nicole and Colleen, for Caleb, for Cheryl. We pray for Bob and for uh, Paul, Pastor Pet. We pray for uh, Nicole and Robert. We pray for Jack and for Mark, for Jen and for John. We pray for members of Bob Gauza's family. We lift up Randy and Ken, Ella, Jody. We pray for Becky, for Jerry and Sandy, for all those who are in need of healing and strength, Father, that you would work in their lives according to your good and gracious will and help them to know that you are near. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Father, for all those who are in positions of leadership over us at every level of government, that you would protect and keep them and that you'd cause them to fear you so that they would do what is just and right for the good of all. We pray for those who serve and protect us, uh, Lord, in our armed forces, also our police forces. We, we pray for those uh, who provide for us, our first responders, firefighters, emergency medical professionals, uh, that you'd bless them and keep them in their labors. We pray for all those who carry out their daily callings with greater difficulty because of the pandemic, that you'd grant grace to them, that their callings would continue to be a blessing for us and we to them. Uh, we pray, Father, for children and for teachers as uh, they teach and learn, Lord, that you'd grant your grace to them as well, that you'd look with favor upon us and, and provide for us, not as we deserve, Father, but according to your mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue pray, to pray, Father, for your church wherever it is found, wherever it gathers in your name around the world, that you would bind us together in your love, that you'd unite us in your truth of who Jesus is and what he has done for us, that you'd uh, continue to do your good work in the midst of your church, refine us, purify us, mature us, uh, that we would be uh, able witnesses of your love and grace in Jesus. To that end, strengthen us through the gift we share tonight of your Son's true body and blood. We thank you, Father, that you hear our prayer for Jesus' sake, and we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to your mercy, trusting in your love and praying the prayer that your Son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. I'd invite you to be seated as we sing our next hymn together. We sing selected stanzas of Rejoice, O Pilgrim Throng. <laughs> 